as utility uh, partners and, and stakeholders in the program. Um, so uh, in, in that capacity, I have a lot of experience with Portfolio Manager, and I was involved in the requirements and, and, and development process uh, for this new building emissions calculator tool. Um, so I can't necessarily speak to every single issue, especially if they're sort of uh, resource allocation or policy type questions. Um, but um, I do have a pretty good understanding of the tool. Uh, and so we'll be happy to uh, take you on a tour through it today. Um, I did want to say that I'm trying to make this where it's in between just a, a high level 10 minute overview, um, you know, on one side and then on the other side being this, you know, A to Z soup to nuts demonstration. Because um, we have done that demonstration um, and there is a recording of it available. Um, I'll show you where to find that in just a minute. Um, but today, to allow this to be as you know interactive as possible, you know we're going to be encouraging people to raise their hand or to send in questions as we go through this, um, so we can respond in real time rather than asking you to uh, save questions uh, till the end. You know, as such, we may not get through every single mouse click that can be taken, you know, in this tool um, today. But the goal is to give you a general sense of what the tool looks like, how it works um, to allow you to maybe go away and you know try on your own to see uh, the ways in which this this tool might be useful um, for your purposes. All right, so with that, I'm going to go off camera and I'm also going to share my screen. Brendan, can you just confirm that you are seeing my screen now? Yep, sorry, yep. Perfect. All right. All right. Well, um, first question you might have is, hey, where do I go to find the building emissions calculator? Um, the quickest place to go, I, I imagine that you know, most of you spend some amount of time every week on the energystar.gov uh, slash buildings website. But from the Energy Star Commercial Buildings main page, the quickest way to go is in this left hand nav bar to go to resources by topic. B is going to be the first index item. You come right down to building emissions calculator. And that will take you to the landing page uh, for this tool. Um, general landing page with general information about the tool. Um, there's also a link to a help page which contains more uh, detailed guidance. And it looks like this. Um, that includes a step by step user guide, um, a glossary specific to the building emissions calculator, uh, a link to contact our help desk with any questions, um, and then technical references for the building emissions calculator, and then uh, just quick access to the pre-existing technical references for both green power and greenhouse gas emissions calculations. Um, we wanted to provide them all in one place because the building emissions calculator um, you know, is premised upon the idea that you should be able to get your building data from portfolio manager into the building emissions calculator. Um, in some ways, some of the calculations the tool turns out should be uh, exactly the same as what you would get from portfolio manager. And notably what we'll talk about today are the places in which you can perform additional uh, manipulations or transformations of the data in the building emissions calculator beyond what you can do in Portfolio Manager. All right, so coming back to the building emissions calculator main page, um, we are just going to go ahead and dive right into it. And as uh, Brendan noted, you know, as you have questions, please uh, raise your hand. Um, I will try to watch the chat window, but Brendan and Celeste, if you see anything come in uh, that I'm not acknowledging, feel free to to break in um, and and, sure, and ask me to to address that. All right. So the the quickest way to get to the calculator is to click on use the calculator. And I've actually already got that page pulled up. Let me um, increase my screen zoom. Um, if this is not large enough for anybody to see, please let me know. Um, this is the landing page for the building emissions calculator. Um, it is intended to, you know, look, you know, to keep you within the, the look and feel of the portfolio manager world, but it is separate from portfolio manager. Um, due to development complexities, timeframe, budgets, the decision was made to, to not 
build this tool directly within Portfolio Manager. It is a standalone tool, um, but because we know that so many buildings across the country are benchmarking in Portfolio Manager, uh, EPA wanted to make it as easy as possible to get benchmarking data from already benchmarked buildings into the new calculator tool. So to assist with this, we have developed a number of pathways for getting data into the tool. Um, I'm going to focus on this, this first one, um, and that's what I'll uh, demo in, in just a minute, but uh, I wanted to, to give you a sense of what's out there. So the first step um, allows you to reach directly into your portfolio manager account using your username and password credentials and to select buildings for ingestion from there. This is the most direct means of getting data from your portfolio manager account into the building emissions calculator. If you have a large number of buildings or you prefer to work within the established portfolio manager uh, reporting structure, um, we can talk about this a little later, why you might want to use the second option, but there is this second option that if you click on it, what it does is it directs you to a report template in portfolio manager. Okay, you click this link. And if you're already logged in, it takes you right to this page. This should look familiar to anybody uh, who is familiar with the uh, the custom reporting functionality in Portfolio Manager. Um, this is EPA has predefined the report, um, so all you would need to do here is pick your buildings and your date ranges, and then uh, once you have uh, once you've run that report, you would come back here to the building emissions calculator. You would choose the spreadsheet file that you've generated and downloaded uh, to your computer, and then you'd upload it back into the tool. So again, this is still a way to get data directly out of Portfolio Manager, uh, but um, it's it's slightly more manual. And if folks would like to see me walk through that step by step, I, I can do that if we have time at the end of this demo. The third option is available for those who do not have buildings benchmarked in Portfolio Manager or who have a whole bunch of data offline that they'd rather sort of consolidate into, you know, aggregate energy consumption totals um, to do some quick and dirty uh, scenario planning or uh, uh, sensitivity testing. Um, this is a mechanism that allows people to enter data manually. Um, right now, this functionality exists as another spreadsheet. So you'll click on that third option, and then you'll download an Excel template that looks like this. Okay, this is a macro enabled Excel template, which will enable, enable you to simply enter in basic information about your building, as well as total consumption uh, of uh, by fuel type for your building uh, for the 12 month period of your choosing. And you'll note that all of the fuel types and units here um, that you can select are consistent with what Portfolio Manager accepts. Um, the units that you can select for each fuel type are exactly what are available in Portfolio Manager. So the idea is if you don't have a building record already in Portfolio Manager, you can st there's still many ways to, or there's still, a, there's still a way to help you get data into the building emissions calculator. Um, and much as with the, uh, the, the template report or report template based option, you would enter buildings in here. Um, you would save the file to your computer. You would come back here to the building's emissions calculator. You would use the choose file button to select, and then you would upload your file. Any way, uh, any of these three ways will eventually bring you and your data into the building emissions calculator. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like in uh, using the most direct pathway. And if anybody has any questions about these three options, please let me know and I'll I'll stop and uh, answer those. Okay, well, f feel free to uh, chime in at any point. Um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and click on this button. And this is the button that allows us to pull portfolio manager data directly from your account or any account that you have access to because you have the username and password. 
So I'm just going to use a demo account that I that I use for all my trainings. Enter my credentials and click submit. Just like that, what happened was it sent those credentials off to Portfolio Manager and what it pulled back is a list of the properties in my account. OK, so right now this list right here is consistent with the list of properties that I see in the my portfolio page of my portfolio manager account. Let's see, what is that? 34 properties. And I don't think there's a count, but it says these are, I let's say these are 34 properties here. Um, so what you do at this point is this allows you to go through your portfolio and to choose the properties that you want to ingest into portfolio manager. Now, I only have 34 buildings in my account, but if you have a much larger account, um, you could use this search functionality. So let's say um, sample. All right, there we go. All right, I want to do sample office for PM 201. All right, and you'll see that that remains uh, that may, remains checked. And let's see. Uh, sample office for BEC testing. All right, those are the two. Those are the two uh, test properties that I want to use. Um, I'm using them because I know I have complete data for this walkthrough. So I select the buildings, and then I'm ready to go to the next step. Now, one thing I want to say here: you are asked to, or you are forced to, limit your selection here to 50 buildings. Um, this is because, especially using this direct. Uh, mechanism for ingesting buildings. Um, you know, we don't want to bog down the the API uh, that's being used in the background. So there is a limit right now of 50 buildings. As we get more and more users using this tool, as the demand for it is uh, confirmed, um, you know, one of the first things that I think we're interested in looking at is how the number of buildings that can be ingested into the tool could possibly be raised. But at this point, uh, you know, there is a limitation of 50 buildings. And also, please note that the tool is only set up to work for US buildings. Um, there are, there's an opportunity for further conversations with NRCAN uh, to see about, you know, making this tool available for Canadian buildings. Um, but that would be at a later point in time. Right now, uh, you know, this tool works only for US buildings. So once you've selected up to 50 buildings, you click get building dates. And now what you're going to do is you're going to fine tune your selection to determine uh, the, the annual date ranges for which you want to uh, ingest data. So you, it's easiest to think of this in terms of the period ending date in portfolio manager, right? In, in, in PM, anytime you talk about metrics, you're talking about metrics as of a 12 month period ending date. So that's what you're doing here. Um, you're selecting one month and multiple years for which you want to ingest data into the tool. OK, now we've done a couple of things to help you be more likely to request years for which there are data. Um, we return for you the current baseline period ending date and then the current period ending date for each building. So for instance, you can see that this building has data from uh, 2017 through 2020. So this tells you, well, don't pick a date that's before 2017 or after 2020 or the tool won't return any data. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say I want to ingest data for December, uh, meaning you know calendar year, the, the 12 months ending December. And looking at this, I can see that I have complete building data for, uh, well, you know, let's go ahead and select all these years. So you can see that this should return four annual period ending dates for this building. And it should return five annual period ending dates for this building. OK, so let's see how that comes out. Once you've selected your month and your year, you go ahead and uh, select submit data. And there we are. Welcome to the building emissions calculator. In reality, this shouldn't take so long to get into. Um, and I know we're more excited to see the tool than to talk about how to get data into it. Um, but the fact that there are so many pathways for getting your portfolio manager data into the building emissions calculator um, was a, a big part of the design of this tool. And so we wanted to ensure that everybody's aware of those, those multiple pathways. 
When you finally get your selected data into the building emissions calculator, the first place you're brought to is this graphing module. Okay, and just to give you an overview, the two main sections of the tool are the graphing module and then a data table below. Um, the graphing module at any point in time is going to reflect visually um, all of the individual data we have uh, ingested for your building. We'll get to that in just a minute. So looking around this graphing module, so what you can see here is we are currently in building view and what we have are two lines. Each line here represents a property and each dot on the line represents a 12 month period ending date. So a, an observation for this building. And as we saw, there was one building for which we had four years of data, right? And that's this copy of sample office for BEC testing, the green one. So we've got 17, 18, 19, and 20, and then the tool leaves off when it doesn't have any more data. And then for this uh, blue bar, this, the, the, the second uh, line on the page, you'll see that we have five observations, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Okay, so you can think of this as time series data. Each line is a building, each dot on the line is a, a, a year's observation. Um, if you prefer to see things at a portfolio level, so you 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 want to see results aggregated down, so you're just looking at the, the sum total for all of your buildings that you've selected, you could go here to portfolio view, right? And that displays as a bar graph rather than a line graph. One thing I will note is the tool is very literal. So you'll see here that 2021 drops off, okay? That's not because the greenhouse gas emissions for this portfolio were cut in half. That's because only one of two buildings is showing results um, for this year. But if you wanted to go here, you can at any point in any graph, you can change the display for what is shown. So if I want to hide 2021 results, all right, now we've got an apples for apples comparison across four annual periods for this two building portfolio. Okay, let me go back to building view. Um, so there are some some quick filters that you can use. You can select, uh, you know, the years you want to show or, or not show, you know, especially if you want to zoom in on one single year. You can, it, you know, if you have 50 buildings in here, um, things are going to get pretty busy. So at any point you can select or deselect the buildings that are shown on this graph. And finally, um, there are a lot of different emissions metrics that are calculated by this tool. Um, and at at any given time, this graph only reflects one um, uh, one metric. So you'll see that the default metric that the graph shows is total emissions, which we are defining as direct emissions plus indirect emissions calculated using the location based method. Um, we want to go into that a little bit further. We we can. Um, but I just did want to note that one of the key things that portfolio manager, uh, well, let me put it this way. Right now, portfolio manager uh, is geared to uh, calculate location based greenhouse gas emissions. But those of you who are familiar with or will soon be familiar with uh, the World Resources Institute greenhouse gas protocol, there are actually multiple ways. Um, for calculating indirect emissions. And that includes both the location-based approach as well as what's called the market-based approach. So one thing that this tool does to build upon portfolio manager functionality is it gives you the opportunity to calculate greenhouse gas emissions using both the location-based approach for indirect emissions as well as the market-based approach for indirect emissions. Um, the market-based approach, let's say uh, there, there are, are, are much more detailed ways of, 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 of describing this, but in short, the location-based approach basically ties your emissions factor to where your building is located. So whatever the grid average emissions rate is uh, for the part of the grid your building's located in, that's what's being used to calculate your greenhouse gas emissions. The market-based approach to calculations um, helps you to essentially gain credit for any uh, procurement based choices that you have made to select um, an energy supply 
uh, that is, is documented as having a different and most likely lower emissions rate. Um, so there are times when, depending on you know the procurement decisions that have been made, whether for energy or for renewable energy credits, green power, um, there could be a meaningful difference between your building's location-based indirect emissions and your building's market-based indirect emissions. And the goal of this tool is to allow that to be captured in a way that um, does not currently uh, take place in Portfolio Manager. All right. So, you know, once you've got all the data into the tool, um, this graphing module is going to be, you know, a place to really just see it in front of you um, and to get the clear sense visually of how things are moving, especially if you like uh, trend lines. Um, but all of this is pulling from this section down below, which is the data table. And the data table is, sorry, there are multiple sliders here. Let me just locate myself. Okay. The data table is broken up into two sections. So the first section is called, we're just calling it emissions baseline. And the intent of this section is to um, basically take the observations that you've ingested into the tool and to calculate greenhouse gas emissions metrics. Okay, this is basically, you can think of this as your historical and current data. Another function of the tool on this orange tab, emissions forecast allows you to make some assumptions about future conditions to see what your building's emissions might look like in the future. We'll talk about that in just a second, but I want to start here on the emissions baseline. Now, you'll remember that we ingested uh, nine observations worth of data for two buildings. So that's four records for one building and five records for the second building. So as you'd expect, you've got nine rows of data in this data table. So four rows of data for one building, five rows of data for the other. And each of those lines of data represents a period, annual period ending date for the building in question. If at any point in time you want to see the data in Portfolio Manager that were ingested into the building emissions calculator, you can simply click on the building name and scroll down here to see the building details. OK, so whatever you ingested from Portfolio Manager or whatever you entered manually, those data points are getting pulled here. Um, and you can uh, validate what you are seeing here against what was in Portfolio Manager. All right, so um, looking across the top here, you'll see that the data table includes building name, annual period ending date, and then we start to get into the meat of the tool. So you've got, I believe it's eight different um, metric types. So you've got a couple of different variations of, um, well, you've got your direct emissions, you've got your two variations of your indirect emissions, and then because there are two flavors of indirect emissions, you've also therefore got two flavors of total emissions. Um, right now, when you first ingest data into the tool, in most cases, your um, uh, location-based and market-based emissions are going to be the same. The only, uh, the only time you might see a discrepancy is if your building is consuming off-site green energy and you have accounted for that in Portfolio Manager. Um, that is something that does not uh, get accounted for as in your total greenhouse gas emissions for um, uh, in portfolio manager, but it does get captured here. So again, if you are already tracking the consumption or the purchase of offsite green power, whether that's a bundled power green power product or or unbundled Rex, um, if you're tracking that in portfolio manager, you should see that show up in the the building emissions calculator as a difference between your indirect. And, uh, sorry, your location-based and your market-based uh, values. You'll also see that there's a section over here that talks about locality factors, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but I want to focus here on this idea of custom factors. Okay, so one thing that differentiates the market-based calculation from the location-based calculation is the idea that the market-based approach allows you to account for any lower emissions uh, energy that you have purchased for which there is a documented validated, you know, lower emissions uh, rate. 
um, our tool allows you to account for that. So let's say this, let's say that our, this first property sample office uh, for portfolio manager 201. Let's say that back in 2017, um, a decision was made to enter into a contract um, to uh, procure uh, electricity, grid electricity uh, from a provider who was able to deliver it at a documented lower emissions factor. Um, how do you account for that in the tool? Well, you come in here and you select the records that you want to apply this custom emissions factor to. And then you come up here and you say, add custom factors. And a new dialog box will come up. And currently this tool allows you to account for custom factors for your indirect fuel types. So that's electricity and then any district fuels that may be purchased to operate a building. Um, in this case, let's just say that our electricity use, let's say that we entered into a contract uh, to purchase 30% uh, um, of the building's electricity from a documented, uh, uh, you know, lower emission source that was able to, um, you know, document an emissions factor of 60 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per MBTU. I'm just making up these numbers right now. I know that that 60 number is lower than the uh, E-grid sub-regional factor for this uh, for this this building's location. So I go in here and I tell the tool, okay, 30% of my electricity consumption should be. Uh, calculated using this lower emissions factor. You click submit, and then all of a sudden, you can see that in this column, custom factors applied, it turns to yes, bold yes. And all of a sudden, you can see now that there is a difference um, for these five building observations between the location-based indirect emissions and the market-based indirect emissions. Right, the indirect calculation is treating all of these buildings with the sub-regional emissions factor um, that was in place during that year. Um, the market-based calculation is factoring in, um, you know, that 30% of the building's total electricity consumption was coming from a quote-unquote cleaner or you know, a, 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 a source with a lower emissions intensity. So that's reflected here. OK, and that divergence between the location based calculation and the market based calculation is an important one to note. And it's one that the WRI greenhouse gas protocol uh, suggests that all greenhouse gas reporters should account for. Um, and of course, as I noted, because there's a difference in the indirect calculations, there is then also a difference in the total uh, calculation. And of course, any changes you you won't be able to see it um, because as soon as we clicked submit, um, the calculations happened and were reflected up here in the graph. But again, um, these uh, this graph should uh, should immediately show whatever the latest calculations are down here in this table. All right, Brendan, I see that you are uh, uh, sharing a few things into the uh, chat window. Um, are any questions that you've come up? I have not seen any, but I just wanted to take a minute to pause. No, I haven't seen anything yet either. Okay. Um, but that's an open call. If you do have any questions as Andrew is speaking, again, feel free to add those to the chat or raise your hand. Um, and I just added the link to the tool itself and the user guide, as well as the two slides we presented on during the quarterly call that sort of um, summarize, I hope, pretty well, both the applicability to building owners as well as possible use cases for state and local governments. So that's what's there. Thanks, Brenda. All right, so um, custom factors, I can sort of talk through a, a couple quick questions. When I talk about, you know, the ability of the tool to generate, custom, uh, to account for custom factors, you may note that um, direct fuel sources are here. So some, of our attendees today might be wondering, well, you know, what happens if we're using, uh, you know, biogas um, for for buildings in our jurisdictions? At this point in time, the WRI greenhouse gas protocols only uh, talks about the the market based versus location based 
uh, calculations happening for indirect fuels, right? And indirect fuel types are electricity and and, and district fuels. Um, so certainly in a future iteration of this tool, we could consider, you know, if there's enough demand, um, you know, allowing custom uh, emissions factors to be input uh, for uh, direct fuels, um, you know, where where those fuels could, you know, may have a, a documented lower emissions factor than the national uh, factor that is being used by our tool. Now, I did want to talk about um, one further example of customizations that you can provide here. So, as we know, across the country, more and more uh, jurisdictions are looking at building performance standards. And in fact, some of them are looking to denominate their building performance standards in terms of greenhouse gas emissions associated with the operation of buildings. At this point in time, uh, New York City, I believe, is the only jurisdiction that has actually mandated um, that specific emissions factors be used in uh, documenting compliance with the building performance standard. Um, so what we did was in building this tool, we actually created a sort of an easy button. So if your building is located in New York and you are subject to those emissions factors, you can pretty easily pull those into the tool. So let's look at this second building. And I'm going to say that I need, let's say that this building is located in New York City. Well, I come on up here, I select my building records, and I come on up here and I click the button that says add locality specified factors. All right, well, you can see at this point, there's only one city that's been baked into the tool with locality specified factors, and that's New York City. However, we know that there are additional cities that are currently developing their factors and will publish them in the, you know, short or medium term. Um, so as those are published, we will add them into the tool. So whether it's, you know, well, I'm not going to name any city's names lest I be speaking out of turn, but, you know, as, as they publish their factors, we will add them to this list. Right now, a building located in New York would select themselves from the list below and then click New York City factors. And all that's doing is that is that's creating a third type of, or a second type of custom metric. Right? It doesn't do anything to your location-based and market-based metrics, but it does calculate um, your emissions factors specifically using the emissions factors that New York City is requiring for these calculations. Um, so in this case, you can see that I haven't applied any you know, custom market-based factors, but I have applied locality-specified factors, and you can see that for these building records down here on the right side. All right, so I see one question that came in about does this tool uh, allow for inclusion of water utility greenhouse gases? Um, so right now a building, there is no mechanism in this tool to calculate greenhouse gas emissions associated um, with, uh, you know, associated explicitly with water. Basically the idea is that in Portfolio Manager, if you are tracking total energy consumption for a building, um, the presumption is that includes, you know, any uh, energy used to pump or heat or cool, uh, you know, water at, at, at your property. So to the extent that that activity, that, that operational activity is included in your building's total uh, energy consumption, you would see it show up here in the greenhouse gas metrics. But no, there is no way to explicitly account for, um, you know, greenhouse gas emissions associated with uh, water-based activities, uh, nor is there an ability to uh, account for the greenhouse gas emissions associated with, um, different choices about waste disposal or, or diversion. All right, so we have talked here about this main tab for looking at your current and historical emissions, as well as the, um, the way in which you can apply custom emissions factors beyond the, the uh, to, to, to get greenhouse gas emissions metrics beyond those that can come from portfolio manager. Now, though, we want to turn to the second functionality of the tool, and that's the ability to do an emissions forecast. So let's click over to this 
orange tab. And what you'll see here is now I only have two lines. OK, before, remember, in the data table, we had nine lines of, of data for these two buildings. The emissions forecast tab simply looks at every building you've ingested into the tool and it identifies the most recent annual period for which you have data in the building emissions calculator. All right. So for one of our property records, that was calendar year 2021. For one of our properties, that was calendar year 2022. Oh, sorry, 2020. Um, you can think of this as simply a starting point for the calculation of your future emissions because you got to start somewhere. So this tool is, um, you know, uh, calculating based on the most recent uh, year of data that you have. So what you would do to apply forecast assumptions is you would go ahead and you'd select one or multiple buildings and you'd click add forecast assumptions. OK, and this is going to bring up a dialogue box uh, where you start telling the tool what some assumed parameters are going to be for your building at a future date and time. So let's say that we want to. Uh, do some scenario analysis for how we expect this building to be uh, performing in 2040. All right, so at, at, at present you can only um, select one forecast year per building. Um, at a future date that, that could be expanded. Um, but the tool then asks you to answer um, questions about five different um, uh, characteristics. So the first thing it asks you to do is to say, OK, what is the anticipated percent electricity use of your building in 2040? And from the slider here, you can see that it defaults to your building's current level of performance. So currently this building is uh, consuming 73% of its energy from electricity. Well, let's say that this building goes on an electrification push and is actually capable of making changes such that all of its energy comes from electricity, whether that's from uh, grid electricity or on-site renewables or off-site renewables, right? Let's say this building has gone completely electrified. Um, now, if you wanted to try different gradations, you could sit here and you can say, well, maybe it's 95% electrified or 90% electric, but just for simplicity, we're going to say this building has gone all electric. The next question is, all right, what percentage of energy reduction do you anticipate between now and this future date? OK, so let's let's be aggressive. I think uh, a deep energy retrofit is defined as what, like 35 percent savings minimum. So let's say let's let's target 35 percent. We're saying between uh, 2021 and 2040, this building, in addition to going 100 percent electric, is also going to um, cut its site energy use intensity by 35 percent through uh, energy efficiency measures. OK. Um, Let's say the next question is about offsite green power use. So if you're going to be using um, the purchase of bundled green power uh, or um, unbundled RECs as a strategy for reducing your greenhouse gas emissions, um, you know, uh, you know, what percentage of offsite green power is your is your building going to be using? Now I know that different jurisdictions may choose to allow or or disallow. Uh, the use of of RECs as a means of getting to a, a certain greenhouse gas emissions target. But in this case, let's just say that this building is going to be, uh, you know, getting 10% 10, uh, 10 of its electricity is going to come from off-site green power sources. Um, it asks you a similar question for on-site green power. OK, so this is on site renewable energy, either PV or wind. Um, you know how you, you can answer in 2040, how much of my building's electrical requirement is going to come from on site renewables? You know, heck, let's be aggressive. Let's say it's going to be 30 percent. OK, and then finally, if you have a sense of what a future greenhouse gas emissions factor could be, for your for your local grid, you can put that in here. So right now, as of 2021, the current greenhouse gas emissions factor for this building's local grid was 90.3. What if they cut that in half? You know, let's not say complete decarbonization, but let's say that by 2040, the grid emissions factor is cut in half to 45 kilograms of CO2e per 
a million BTU. We can put that in here and have that as our fifth of five uh, assumptions. Once you put in all these assumptions, you click submit. And it's going to take you right back up to this top graph. And you can see in the case of this one building, because we only applied those factors to one of our two building records. But you can see how this building's anticipated greenhouse gas emissions have fallen off between current and future. Um, let's go here to uh, total emissions. Um, so this is total emissions. So you can see that it's an even starker drop off if you account for uh, total greenhouse gas emissions. Um, that's because in the case of this building, there would be no direct emissions anymore because they went straight to zero. Because in uh, the case of this building, um, it went 100% electric. So there is no longer any, uh, any direct emissions associated with natural gas or other on-site fuels. Now, if at any point you want to change these uh, these assumptions, you can always click back into the property name and you will get this window that allows you to see again what your your baseline was for this building, and then you can update um, any of these metrics in here. So again, if we don't think the building's going to be one hundred percent electricity, maybe we want to back that off to ninety. And maybe we're not going to get to thirty five percent energy reduction. We're going to get to twenty. And maybe we're not going to do any off-site green power, but we're going to do 25% on-site renewable. Okay, and let's take a less um, aggressive, uh, you know, look at the uh, prediction of the of the the grid emissions factor. You can make those updates, and they will factor in here. Again, it's still a significant drop off. It's just less than you would have seen before. Um, so that's the main functionality. I do want to uh, call out two items that I hadn't touched on yet. So at any point in time, as you were going through the tool and you were making these uh, customizations or forecast uh, figures, you can get those data out of the tool by using this download button. So for your emissions forecast data, you can download your data in a spreadsheet that looks like this. Basically, these will be all the same metrics that were generated within the in the tool, but they're prepared in a in a way where you can take them with you. Um, also, you can capture any forecast assumptions that you made um, in arriving at these these calculations. Uh, I would also say that going back to the emissions baseline tab, if you want to download a record of your current and historical performance, you can do that as well. You click this button and you will get this um, spreadsheet. It's a little bit more uh, detailed. Um, it includes basically an output of the same data table that exists in the tool, um, but it also contains all the data that were ingested into the tool from Portfolio Manager, as well as any um, custom factors that you may have uh, that you may have factored into the tool, um, whether locality-based factors or, um, you know, or, or otherwise. Finally, it's in this, uh, this file where you can see the sort of the lookup table of all the emissions factors for all the different fuel types um, across the various years. So one of the nice things here is, you know, if you say, you want the greenhouse gas emissions calculator to calculate you know, greenhouse gas emissions for 2004, it's going to look back at the emissions rate for the specified fuel source for your location for that year. So it's a pretty in-depth lookup table that is underpinning the, uh, the tool. All right, so at this point, um, I think we've gotten through all the functionality of the tool. I see that there has been some um, lively um, uh, discussion here uh, going on about EV chargers. So one thing that I will say right now is um, the information that you are working with in the building emissions calculator is really based on what you've input in Portfolio Manager. So if you have accounted for uh, the energy co consumption associated with EV chargers at a building, if that's included within the total energy uh, uh, picture that you've set up in Portfolio Manager, then 
yes, that would that would flow through. If it's in your portfolio manager data, it's going to um, you know come through into your emissions calculator data. That said, I know that there are folks out there who you know may be excluding um, EV chargers from their total building uh, energy consumption for portfolio manager purposes. Um, and you know, even if you are including it, there's no way to sort of earmark that so that it's called out separately. You know, that may be a case in which you know a user wants to use the manual import method. So maybe you have your uh, consumption details associated with you know an EV charger, and you want to run that separately through the portfolio uh, through the building emissions calculator. Um, you know, one of the best ways to do that might be to just use the manual import template and, you know, just call it building name, you know, building one, two, three EV charger, you know, and then put in the, the requisite um, energy consumption details here. Um, obviously, you know, the role of EV chargers is only going to become more and more important um, in terms of, you know, long term electrification and decarbonization strategies, um, you know, at this time. You know, portfolio manager and therefore the building emissions calculator, you know, can't really subdivide um, down to that level. But um, yeah, Brendan, it looks like you gave a pretty um, extensive response uh, in the chat window. So if there's anything you want to add there, uh, let me know. No, I think it was excessively extensive. So <laughs> hopefully, it, hopefully it's covered. Um, so that's that's it with the guided walkthrough. I, I hope that was the the right level. I, I didn't want to get too far into the weeds, but I did want to give folks the opportunity to really see how this tool works so they can get in here and try it out for themselves. I did mention that there was an existing uh, recording um, that went through sort of from A to Z how to use this tool, including um, a walkthrough what each of the three, um, uh, what each of the three, uh, uh, ingestion methodologies look like. So uh, many of you may be familiar with the Energy Star um, uh, WebEx page, basically esbuildings.webex.com. Um, from there, there you can access event recordings. And what you're seeing here, um, actually the most recent recorded webinar uh, available is this introduction to the portfolio manager building emissions calculator. It was the second of a two part series. The first one was held on May 10th. So if you scroll down a little bit, uh, that talks a little bit more about the rationale uh, for why the building emissions calculator was developed, what it sought to, to do. Um, so if you're interested in looking at either of these, you can access those recordings on demand. Um, if you know you want to go just a level of detail beyond um, what we talked about today. But uh, in terms of today, I think we've covered the demo and uh, I do have a hard stop at three as I know many of you do, but I'm here to answer any outstanding questions or uh, you know any other feedback you'd like to pass along or initial thoughts. And I'll just say any questions for um, how you might use the tool. Obviously, we'll we have the demo that Andrew mentioned. Um, we had a couple of those sort of focused on the building owner audience primarily. But if you have any questions, um, then feel free to ask now, or you can also reach out to us at any point if you have questions on um, how it might work for you. So. Brendan, one other thing I'd point out is from the um, Energy Star Help Desk. So the short link to get there is energystar.gov slash buildings help. Um, there are a few uh, FAQs which have already been loaded up in the uh, greenhouse gas emissions section of the portfolio manager FAQs. But if you just type in building emissions calculator, it should uh, allow you to, to find the, the new FAQs and we will be adding to these as appropriate. Um, you probably may also know that the, the home page for the building energystar.gov slash buildings help allows you to contact support directly. So if you have any questions 
um, uh, about the tool, whether it's a question about functionality or feedback on functionality that you'd like to see or hope to see in the future, uh, the best way to, to submit that is via this form. And in the subject line, you just type, you know, building emissions calculator. Yeah, you can do that or you can just email Katie and I either way. Exactly. So, there are yeah, yeah. multiple ways, but it'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll get to the right, it'll get to the right place. All right. Um, I'm not seeing anyone raise their hand or add anything to the chat. Maybe we'll give it a last minute. Um, but I want to thank Andrew for the demo and thank all of you for joining today. It's good to see a pretty good turnout. So um, yeah, hopefully this has been interesting. Uh, you can think about how, if not for your own use cases, you could promote it to building owners to help them sort of think about the future and also understand their performance in a different way. So I hope this um, had value and um, yeah, talk to you soon. Well, thanks so much for letting me uh, be part of the show today, Brendan. Really enjoyed it. Of course. All right. Thank you all. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye-bye.